Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on accessing the MetaQuest pass-through camera API in Unity using my open source package uxr.questcamera. It uses a native Kotlin plugin to get the camera data and pass it on to Unity. So I've got a Unity project here and in the package manager settings I've added the open UPM scopes and a, a registry that is required by the package. Now, if you already have the external dependency manager for Unity installed as part of a Google or Firebase SDK, you can remove this scope from the settings. And I've installed the package and the external dependency manager from the package manager under My Registries and Open UPM. Now, in the player settings, I've set the minimum API level to Android 10. And this tutorial will not reference either input systems of Unity, but since Unity requires you to only use one input system for Android builds, I've chosen the new input system package. And then in publishing settings, I've created a custom main manifest with these two lines. These two lines tell the MetaQuest that you're using the camera permission. If your app doesn't require them and it's optional, you can change the Android required values here to false. If you're on Unity 2022, you'll also have to install com.utilities.async. This is because uxr.questcamera uses some uh, threading utilities to switch between the JNI and main thread. So since older versions of Unity don't have the available class, you'll have to install this as an alternative to that. Now in Unity, in the first scene of your app, right click on the hierarchy and under Quest Camera, select Quest Camera Manager. This will add the U Camera Manager persistent singleton to the scene. This will persist across all scenes of your app and since there's only one instance of it, it can be referenced from all scripts. U Camera Manager will allow you to access metadata about all the available cameras on the device. Now I'll create a new script. And now this is a step for if you're using the Meta XR Core SDK. If you're using it, then what you have to do is check if the current device supports the pass through camera API. The API is only supported on Meta Quest 3 and Quest 3S devices running Horizon OS version 74 or higher. So you can use the camera support class and the is supported property to check if the device is supported. And if it's not, you can, for example, display an error saying uh, the camera API is not supported on this device and return out of the function. Since I'm using a bare bones project, I don't have the MetaXR Core SDK, so I'll just comment this out. Now, after that, the first thing we have to do is check if the headset camera permission has been given. So this will check if the permission has been given and if not, request the permission. Now, what we have to do is I'll just create a variable called camera info. And now from you camera manager, you have to get the information of the camera we want to use. So I can do that by calling camera info equals camera manager dot instance dot get camera. Now this function will allow you to get the camera closest to the user's left or right eye. So I'll just get the left eye camera right now. And I'll log that we have got this info. So we have to get the same information after the permission has been granted. So if we don't have the permission, this will return. So this will be null. So what we have to do is create a permission callback for this purpose. So when the permission has been granted after it's been requested, this uh, Lambda function will be called and we'll get the camera info. Now I'll add two functions that'll be called by um, buttons to start and stop the camera. So in this we'll first check if the camera info is null and throw an error. 
Now, I'll create two new private variables. So, the first step we have to do is open the camera that we want to access. To do that, you can call you camera manager .instance .open camera, and you can pass in the camera info we got earlier. So this will return a camera device object. This contains a wrapper for the native object and uh, contains functions to create capture sessions. So first we have to wait for this to initialize. So I'll do yield return camera device dot uh, wait for initialization. After this, we check if the camera device opened without errors. So if there were errors, we'll just debug dot log error. And now we have to destroy the camera device so that we can release its native resources. And then I'll yield break. Next, we have to actually create the capture session. So the capture session will be the thing that actually gets us the camera images. So we can say session object equals you camera manager, no, camera device dot create continuous capture session. So continuous capture session will be providing the frames at all times or continuously. If you want the frames on demand or you just want to get one image from the camera, you can call create on demand capture session and then call um, session object dot capture session dot request. Um, oh yeah, I have to change this to on demand capture session and request capture. This will get a capture, a single capture for you. But in this example, we'll be using a continuous capture session. So for creating the capture session, we have to provide a resolution that is contained in the camera info class. Usually the last resolution in this list is the highest resolution that can be provided by the camera. And again, just like camera device, we have to wait for it to initialize. And we'll destroy the session and also the camera device if it could not be opened. Now, what I'll do is I'll create a field for a raw image. This will show the preview of our camera footage. So all I need to do is call preview image dot texture equals session object dot texture converter dot render texture frame render texture. So the texture converter is the object that converts the YUV format camera images to RGBA. And the result of that will be available in the frame render texture. So now to stop the camera, all we have to do is check if the capture session is not null, then destroy it and set it to null. And if the camera device is not null, then destroy it and set it to null. So that's all. Now in Unity, I'll add a raw image. And I'll also add the canvas automatically. I'll set it to scale with screen size. And match both width and height. I'll make the image full screen and 
I'll add the camera test component to the canvas and point the raw image to this. I'll also add the two buttons and I'll make it so that this calls start camera. And this button will call stop camera. And that's it. Now we can build our sample. So I've sideloaded the app to my MetaQuest 3. So let's try it. Okay, I'll just also quickly set up a uh, log cat. And so the camera permission has been requested. I'll allow. So in log cat, we've got the camera info. And when I start the camera, yes. We have got the camera footage. So here you can also see the logs. I'll just scroll up. Yeah, so that's the camera info. Then, yeah. And then I'll just uh, clear it and stop the camera. Yeah, everything works. You can start it, stop it, start it, stop it.